Good morning, everybody. Uh, we have a 2018 Ram 1500 crew cabin for a full interior cleaning, a wash and wax, and an engine cleaning. So in today's video, I'll talk you through the process of how we kind of go through the whole customer interaction process and how we do our customer experience. So kind of lump those two together and just kind of give you a high level overview of what goes on and how we go through talking to the customer, booking the customer, arriving to the location, and then finishing the detail. So um, first thing first, I'm just like real quick, Lex uh, brings out the blower and he cleans up the driveway just because a lot of times like whether we're gonna wash it or do the interior, it's just annoying to have a bunch of like dirt, debris, pebbles and stuff on the driveway. So we always blow that out first just to have a clean surface. And we also put like, today we're, we're parked on a uh, street road inside a neighborhood, but these cars still go by pretty quick. So we put the safety cones. What's up? Doing? Putting the safety cones up so nobody run us over while I'm working. I mean, <laughs> you see? You see this one isn't that bad. There's been other times we're on other, we're in neighborhoods um, and we're parked on the street and those cars are like zooming by like crazy. So I uh, definitely recommend those collapsible uh, uh, safety cones because I mean, they, they really do help warn other drivers to not to, to like to at least give you know give us some type of cushion in terms of better visibility or, or separation between how close they get to the vehicles and real quick we have three more live seo trainings left in the facebook pop-up group the next one is this sunday at 10 a.m central time if you want to grow your business and get more customers through search engine optimization seo check the description box down below for the facebook pop-up group link and all the other links that you need but it's only open for a limited time after the 24th i'm shutting it down and all the training and information in that group will be taken down as well so let's get to the video we book our customers into jobber right that is our choice of crm there's a hundreds of crms out there they all do just about the same thing just pick whatever works for you but this one keeps track of our customers their their uh, address their services you can set, accept payments invoices all that jazz it's done through there literally almost every crm does the same thing or, or field service uh, software does the same thing which is jobber you can check the link down uh, check the check the description box down below to, to see exactly what we use um, so we put them in there, we booked them in, and then three days before the detail, they get an email confirmation. One day before the, the detail, they get a text confirmation. They'll confirm, we're set to go, and then we arrive on location. Now when we arrive, Lex will either call or text. Typically, it depends on whatever the customer wants, but we, we usually just text because, I mean, we just gotta let them know we're here and they'll come outside. Uh, so we text the customer that we've arrived, Lex puts on the mask, the customer comes out, and then we inspect the vehicle. So here, uh, because the vehicle was stuck up, not stuck up, but it was like higher up the driveway and it was, it was, it's a real tight space, we asked to bring the truck down. We're inspecting it right now and Lex will give the final price on the truck. So we we give a price range on the interior because we don't know the condition. So I think it's... Uh, What's the quote? What's the what's uh? It is the quote is two forty to two eighty on the inside. He's, he's inspecting it right now. The wash and wax is three hundred, and the engine cleaning is sixty dollars. Now the customer hasn't came out yet, uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna text the customer the info. He's he's there. He's in the home. He just hasn't came out. So we're gonna text the customer and let him know the exact price for the interior. That way we confirm all the pricing and then we get started. Right, did you text the customer right now? Yes. What you, you text him? Tell him the final price for the full interior, wash and wax, engine bay. And what he said? He hasn't replied. Oh, he hasn't? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we're, we're waiting for him to reply. I'll tell him, let me know if it sounds okay. And then we'll get started. Now, we don't accept pricing until until the detail is complete to make sure they're happy and then that's just the way we do things could you accept payment at the beginning absolutely it's up to you there's no right or wrong way just make sure that you're doing it you know in the best way possible like whatever whatever best way possible means to you just do it that way but there's no rule or guideline that says you know accept it before in the middle and you have to, in the you know after the detail whatever you feel comfortable we've never had any bad experiences maybe once and that happened recently that we haven't got paid yet i'm not saying we're not but we've never had any you know out of the hundreds of vehicles we've done now maybe one has gone wrong. So, you know, we've never had any problem receiving payment after the detail. We've never had any problem receiving payment uh, uh, once we send an online invoice. So we've never had any, pr hardly 99.9% .9 of the time, we have zero problems 
with accept accepting payment regardless of the payment method. Now, as Lex said, the customer hasn't replied yet. So what do we do there? If we're, give, if we're giving him a final price and we need, to make, we need to make sure he's fine with the final price, do we proceed with the detail? Now, out of the three services that we quoted him, only one was a price range and that was the interior, 240 to 280. So that means he was already agreed upon the $60 engine bay cleaning and the uh, $300 wash and wax. So if we didn't hear anything back from him, then we would proceed with the engine and wash and wax because he already agreed on that price. It was just the uh, interior that needed to be confirmed. Okay, so Lex spoke with the customer right now. What did the customer say? Let's do the pricing. He said everything was fine. What did, uh, what did you quote on the interior? The interior was 240 the exterior was 300 and the engine bit was 60. It's gonna take about five, six hours. So it was cool with that. It's going to work, should be back by then. So simple, nothing biggie. You just gotta talk. All the details were basically already confirmed over email. We just wanted to confirm one last time, but he, the customer already knew what was gonna take place, how much, how long. So there's nothing like new that we, you know, there's no new details that were that were brought forth. We're just, we, we were confirming for like the third time what we're gonna do for the price range or for the for the prices we set the typically the only thing that is on, is in a price range is a interior cleaning a full interior cleaning and a uh, and any type of like polishing or paint correction um the wash and wax the mini interior detail the uh, engine cleaning wash and wax um the uh, all those services are for the most part for the most part like 9.9 .9 out of 10 going to be a fixed price because we already know the variables not much changes nothing really nothing's really different uh we can like even even if it's like a like yesterday's vehicle uh was a completely hammered lexus whatever whatever it was like filthy dirt everywhere uh mud and everything once you rinse it it's like it's clean again so that's why like those are so easy to do they're just the interiors have a few more factors and in, into going into pricing so now what we're going to go is go into jobber he had the information and then can you click it and then now the we basically clocked in for this job and then we'll stop the timer once we're done with the job just to see how how long exactly it took us but now we just get to work no cars are supposed to be coming in and out we're just going to be here working and that's it for the next four or five hours now for us at this point we do have a company phone meaning it's a dedicated phone just for the company line it's 100 it's 100 used for the company um but do you need that when you're first starting off absolutely not no just use your just use your personal uh, phone number and then years down the line if so if, it, if you see it fit then you switch your personal line to a business line that's what i did like that's essentially just what i did so you don't have to overcomplicate it you don't have to be like oh should i get a new business phone it's like no you have no customers no one's calling you like why would you add that expense and it's not even going to be useful you might sound cool like oh here's my company phone but it's just like if you don't need it you don't need to do that just use your personal line and at some point in the future use that as strictly your business phone Okay, so first phase of vacuuming is all done. That took like 13 minutes. So now we're gonna end cap the floor mats and then the rest of the cleaning starts. So we're gonna clean the leathers, door panels and all that. Hour and a half maybe, I don't know. Okay, so like I mentioned, I don't care about chemicals. Like an uh, APC is an APC, a clay lube is a clay lube, a rinseless wash is a rinseless wash. I don't put too much emphasis on chemicals because they, they all do about the same, right? There's no like true like, that is a true game changer. 
but what I do put an emphasis on, emphasis on our tools and hardware, right? So like these, like if you wanna increase your interior cleaning efficiency and get it done quick, I'm pretty sure all these cars are like, what's that guy doing looking at the camera like that? Uh, if you guys wanna increase your efficiency, these, I'll link them down below, I don't know, I don't know what they're called. Um, I'll, I 100% I recommend these. This for the leather seat, it makes it go by ridiculously quick. I don't care what APC you're using, what leather cleaner you're using, I don't, but if you pair it up with this, instead of your little cute little brush that you're doing in circular motions, you know, to bring up, don't even think about that. You wanna upgrade to something like this. And door panels, even leather seats, yes, this one, they work fabulous. So it is now 10.34, hopefully you can see that. And we are now finished with the interior. Well, we're about to be finished. She's just uh, blowing some stuff out and putting the mats back in. So that took, uh, we started like at 9.20, unfortunately, like 9.15, because again, like the customer didn't come out. We kind of waited, moved the vehicle around, whatever, whatever, whatever. So we had to start at 9.20. Uh, so just under an hour and we finished it wasn't that bad to begin with I mean we still scrubbed all the leather the door panels all the plastic um, and kept the the the, the cart the floor mats touched up some spots on the carpeting so we still did everything but it, it wasn't bad so that's why it just took an hour so next is after the interior we move move forward to the engine and again that one it's just your typical dirt and debris that's built up over several years so shouldn't take too long bottle the water-based dressing diluted one-on-one -on -one. don't dress this in your bed make it look real nice be generous with this So I know I sound like a broken record when it comes to pot sprayers, but if you don't, if you're using a spray bottle for clay lube versus a pump sprayer, you just can't match a pump sprayer. Yes, you have to pump it up the first time to build up the pressure, like of course, but that's like kind of spray bottle. Okay, if you have the Quasar bottle, you know that's also pretty good. But if you have, like, can a spray bottle really beat the coverage like this? Like, is that even comparable to a spray bottle? No. So, get a spray bottle, use a clay pad, uh, clay mitts, and you'll be good. And there's, <laughs> there's nothing on here. I don't feel anything. Okay, so maybe it's 12 o'clock right now. We're three hours in. We're like 85% done. Now, 
this is basically how it goes every single time. We talk to the customer, confirm the price, get any last details, and then typically nine out of 10 times, we're just working out in the driveway or at their apartment or at their uh, work location for the duration of the detail. And the next time we see them is when we're done, we call them out, they look at the vehicle, they say they're happy, ask us any questions, point anything out, we accept payment and we leave. Or perhaps they don't come out at all, we just send them an invoice, uh, on, an online invoice, they pay, and then like hours later, they'll be like, oh my God, just how the interior, just how the exterior looks amazing. That's the gist of it. So, you know, for the first couple of customers that you get, it is kind of, you know, you're real nervous about it because you feel like every step that you do and every word that you say and every action that you take is supposed to be perfect into the T, but you know, it's really laid back like we don't we're not talking super professional here we're not using these big words we're not trying to impress anyone in any other way than who we are so when you're out in the field you know it's no different than when you're just talking to like a good friend of yours you know like it, nothing really changes All right, so it's now 12.30. This is where I wrap up my helping here on the field. And then I return back to the lab to do the content business stuff. So Lex will actually have to finish up the vehicle by himself, which isn't much. I did most of the work anyhow, so he should be good and rested for Cut. the remaining. <laughs> Next, all that's left is the uh, prepping, prepping the paint, applying the wax or sealing it, whatever. We're doing dressing the tires, cleaning the exterior and interior glass, and doing the door gems, right? Yep. I think so. Yeah. How does it feel when I leave, dude? How do you, does it suck? Such a relief. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Kind of sucks. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm taking twice longer. Man, it's cool. Dude. What you got going on here, dude? What you doing? I'm, uh, how do I put this in a good way? Removing the excess dressing from the honeycomb grill. Okay. All right, and that was an abrupt way of ending the video, but again, I'm just gonna end the video right here. Check the links down below for SEO for Detailers pop-up group. The next one is on Sunday at 10 a.m., the SEO live training. You can download the ultimate guide to start your detailing business. Check all the links for the products that we use. Whatever you wanna see, you'll find down in the description box. Other than that, let me know if you have any comments, questions, concerns. Hope to see you in the Facebook group and I'll talk to you on the next one. Peace.